Hi, I'm Richard from STV Machinery and today I just wanted to give you a really quick introduction to some of the terminology that we're using. It's going to be very simple, but the idea is, is that once you know the sort of the basics and terminology, you can then read through the data sheets, which are, uh, they're not generic for each manufacturer, but they pretty much all read the same data. So for all of the machinery we list on STV Machinery, we try and produce this sim simple and single template so that you can see the key sort of specifications of the machine online and really easily to do so. So we'll just um, start off with the clamp unit in terms of what we're doing. So looking at the, the data sheet, clamping force is uh, hopefully uh, fairly straightforward but it's the force at which the two platens are held um, together or the maximum force that's available. So in this case this is a, a boy 55 tonne machine so it can hold the, uh, the, the mould shut with a force of 55 tonnes. Um, we're actually showing you uh, this machine today because it's one that we're doing uh, a refurbishment job on so all of the guards are off but it's a lot easier to show you the ins and outs of it with all the guards off so a bit more interesting as well then we have uh, the maximum opening stroke so this is important because it, depending upon sort of the depth of your mold you need to make sure that the mold can open and eject the part so this is the maximum distance that the actual clamp unit can open and then you have minimum and maximum mold height this is related to the opening stroke to make sure that actually the maximum distance you have available and the minimum distance you have available to fit your mould into. So between minimum, maximum mould height and opening stroke, you have to work out does the mould fit in, can it open and then can you eject the part as well. There is a bit of a difference when you're talking about direct lock and toggle lock machines but we don't really need to get into that too much today, you just need to know what that terminology means. Then we have platen dimensions, which are, this is the fixed platen, this is the moving platen, and it gives you the overall dimensions of the platen, so you can make sure that your mould isn't likely to overlap uh, the outside of those platens. And then related to that, of course, is the distance between the tie bars. These are tie bars, and on this machine we've got a four tie bar machine, which is pretty standard. Smaller machines do tend to have uh, two but uh, most are, are four tie bars or uh, there are tie barless machines as well but we'll cover that another day. So the distance between tie bars is really important because you need to make sure that the mould can fit in between the two top tie bars to, um, so that uh, you can get the mould into the machine. And then finally on our specification sheets we also uh, list the ejector stroke. So at the back of the moving platen here we have our ejector and that just gives you the measurement as to how far this can push forward to eject the mould, uh, eject the part from the mould. So with that information on the clamp unit it's the bare bones really of what you need to be able to figure out whether this, this mould uh, will fit into uh, this particular machine and it gives you a bit of an insight into the terminology as well. So we'll move on to the injection unit next. Okay, so now we're at the other side of the machine, uh, on the injection end, and uh, also I forgot to mention that you can look at this data sheet, we'll put uh, a link in the description below on the video so you can have a look at, as we're sort of going through it. But on the injection unit, the first thing we have is the screw diameter, so this is the plasticizing unit, uh, within that you have the barrel, the screw and the screw tip, these can be various different sizes even within the machine clamp size range, uh, the data sheet tends to list maybe one or or up to four different screws that can go into it. So in this particular instance, we're dealing with a machine that has a 38 millimeter screw inside it. And then on the data sheet, we can see that it gives us a shot weight of 122 grams. Now, this is given in polystyrene because it's a, it's a fairly generic material that's used. So it gives you an idea of the overall maximum amount of material that can be processed in a single shot. So 122 in this case. And then related to that, you have the shot volume, which is the total volume of the barrel given in one shot. This is a better way, in my opinion, of actually representing what the machine can do, because it's not tied into a particular material, which has a different uh, bolt density to, to other materials. So shot volume is a really easy way to compare one machine to the next, because it, it's always the same. And then you have injection pressure which is important for various different materials uh, but also if you're de uh, dealing with sort of thin walled um, products you tend to have to have uh, a bit more injection pressure to get the, the material into the mould. Uh, sometimes you don't need the injection pressure but injection pressure is tied into the shot weight. Uh, again we'll probably get into that a little bit more in further videos uh, down the line but still you need to know the injection pressure and that's basic information that 
and the terminology that's given to you for the injection unit. The final bit on our STV machinery simple data sheets we put online is the general data. First thing on here is the pump unit. So under here we've got the pump in the motor and it gives you that rating in kilowatts. So on this particular Boy 55 that's uh, 11 kilowatts. And then related to that, the next bit that's given is total connected load. That includes the 11 kilowatts for the pump unit, but it also includes auxiliary sockets. So around the back here, we've got uh, auxiliary sockets, and it assumes that you've got something plugged into those and it's drawing sort of maximum. So in this instance, uh, all together, it's rated at uh, 18.45 kilowatts. So, but it's worth bearing in mind that is a worst case scenario. But adding all that together, you can kind of get a feel for what the machine is likely to do or draw day to day. The next one is the oil tank capacity. So on this particular boy machine, we've got oil level sight glass here and the actual uh, oil filler cap that you put it in there. And this particular machine takes 200 litres of oil. The next two bits and the final bits actually for the general data is the net weight of the machine which is pretty much always given without oil so you have to remember that if you are lifting machines with oil in them which you have to be a little bit careful about in case it's not a sealed tank but uh, in this case the machine is 2250 kilos so just over uh, 2.2 tons and then it gives you the machine dimensions which should be fairly self-explanatory but uh, they tend to be length width and height so in this instance it's 3.3 meters long by one meter wide and just over two meters tall. So we try and make the data sheets really simplistic so that they're easier to compare on our website, but we do tend to have all of the manufacturer's data sheets uh, available for the machines as well. So if we look, need to look at any more sort of specific details, we can do. So if there's anything else you need to sort of know about a machine that we've got listed, just drop us a line and we'll be happy to help. Thanks very much.